Welcome to the new series of podcast by Coinman Consultants LLP. I am Priyank Kukreja, Director, Corporate Secretarial at Coinman Consultants LLP, and uh, I have with me Mr. Nitin Gurg, founder and promoter of Coinman Consultants, who shall bring in his experience in the subject matter of doing business in India. Yeah, hi Nitin. Uh, I am someone who is into the business of infrastructural development, and uh, currently I am doing business in South Korea through a limited liability partner company. So I am looking forward to do business in India as well with similar objects of infrastructural development in India. Could you tell me like how can I do business in India? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Pran. Uh, basically, infrastructure uh, usually follows its own uh, path because most of the projects that get awarded in India on infrastructure are through international bid uh, or domestic bidding. which means that the biggest significance is of the credentials uh, technical and financial usually what we see is that companies uh, especially the foreign companies uh, bid as a foreign company only because if we set up a new legal entity in india uh, it will not have the you know right credentials to participate in the bid so based on experience uh, this uh, it is mostly the foreign companies bidding directly Once the project is awarded, uh, the company will normally come and set up a project office in India, uh, which is the preferred way of executing these projects. Uh, there are alternate options uh, for you to consider. For example, you can continue or you can set up a branch office, and through which participate in these these bids. I think one will have to see basis the qualification requirement. Uh, from a commercial perspective, as to what is the best option for them to, but yeah, generally speaking, it is the foreign company bidding directly, and then setting up the project office for example. Thank you so much for the explanation. Like right now, uh, to tell you that I have got a few multiple projects in pipeline. What would be the best business structure for me in that case? You uh, have already got certain projects which you are planning to bid for. Uh, as I said, you can uh, set up a branch office and bid through that. uh because project office there are certain limitations uh, especially in the sense that you will have to open multiple project offices for each project that you get you cannot uh, bear expenses of one project office with the other so there are certain challenges so you can consider uh, a branch office which can then take multiple projects but uh, it will then depend on what is exact business activity of yours So, if it is a service business, then yes, you can consider branch office. But if it's a construction business or you get into construction, then it will be difficult. So, then probably the only choice you will have is the uh, project office. Having okay. said so, we have also seen companies set up private limited companies so that they can execute certain part of the jobs through these private companies and over a period of time build credentials in these private companies for uh, future bidding purposes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, could you like uh, tell me a brief uh, difference between a project office, branch office, and a private limited company? Like, what would be the best suitable way uh, uh, for me to come into India and set up my uh, infrastructure business? So, basically, private limited company is a legally separate entity, which means you are able to limit your legal liabilities in India, uh, and the head office remains largely aloof from any any kind of legal liabilities that may arise in India at all. But if you set up a branch office or a for, uh, project office, they are just extensions of your foreign company, uh, which means the foreign company is legally liable for everything uh, they do in India. Uh, so that is the one largest difference. Uh, usually, uh, preference for foreign companies is uh, to have a separate private company uh, so that they can limit their legal liabilities if at all. But uh, just the structure of infrastructure business is such that uh, you usually end up having project office or a branch office. In your particular case, I would say uh, because if you are going to participate in bids and use the credentials of foreign company, you actually have only. Uh, the choice of either doing a branch office or a project office. Uh, so, which means legally you will be uh, you know, exposed to to contractual risks, etc. And uh, from a tax perspective, also there will be uh, slightly higher tax on, on the income of project office or a branch office. Uh, and, and as I said, private limited right now does not seem to be a good option. But uh, if you want to build significant credential, then you think. Uh, commercially, you will be able to subcontract uh, a lot of work to a private company. Uh, then, of course, uh, that will be different. As I said, I mean, initially you should just bid directly and uh, work with project office structure. 
Okay. Uh, so I have one more question. Like, let's assume I have got the project, and uh, like, uh, would it it be possible to uh, for me to raise funds in India, or uh, like, how will I bring in my funds? From outside India. So basically, uh, normally a project office, uh, you know, gets two kind of funds. One is the money that you receive from your client, or the other is the money that you bring in from head office, uh, uh, and that money you can easily bring in. Usually, project offices do not raise local debt. Uh, again, it is because of the way contracts, uh, etc., are structured. And also, uh, you may not want to raise local debt simply because that will give access to Indian banks uh, to your entire balance sheet, uh, right? Because uh, you know, head office uh, will get involved. So, what usually people do is that you basically raise money uh, from your overseas bankers, uh, like in your case, it could be Shinhan Bank or IBK Bank. And basis, you know, what uh, the lines they have given you in Korea. You can get some money uh, from their local branches in India, but uh, you know that's because largely uh, then you are banking with only one banker and not involving Indian bankers separately. Okay, so uh, like assuming that uh, I've already set up my project office or branch office here in India, so how will I uh, like if I earn the profit here? How will I repatriate my profits outside India? Okay, so. Uh, like the project office is funded by the money coming in from the head office or the money you receive from your customer you know the profits that you earn every year uh, in the project office after paying the necessary income tax you are actually free to take back that money to your head office the only thing you cannot do is to transfer that money to another project office that you may be executing uh, which means that if in one project office you have surplus money you can take it back to your head office uh, which is freely permitted, uh, and there is no tax on that, and you can bring it back for to the other project office, uh, basically. Okay. And do we have any other practical challenges in uh, setting up of office or branch office? Well, it's setting up will have its own practical challenges in terms of documentation, in terms of the papers that are needed, etc. But I can talk about uh, you know specifically how project offices or branch offices start to operate once you have set it up. So okay. the process of setting up runs through a bank in India, which is usually called an AED bank, authorized dealer bank. You submit your application, they review it, they approve it. There are certain conditions, places which they approve uh, uh, the, the setting up of project office or a branch office. Uh, usually, you know, if you've got a contract from Indian government or Indian company, uh, uh, they will allow you to set this up. Once you set up, I think the first biggest challenge is that uh, you know, usually you have to take mobilization advances from your customer. And on every money that you receive from your customer, uh, there needs to be a withholding tax. So if let's say they have to receive $100, they will deduct a certain part of that as a withholding tax and pay it to the government of India on your behalf. So you will not receive 100 but you will receive less. Now, how much less this should be? is not defined very clearly in the law. Uh, you know, generally speaking, this rate can be 40%. So which means if you have to receive 100, you will only receive 60 and the 40 will get deposited to the government yeah, on your account, which you can claim a refund of uh, after you determine your final tax liability in India. But the usual process is that before you receive that money, go and apply an application or you go and apply for a lower tax certificate. Uh, within the tax department, where they would uh, analyze your estimated profitability, etc., and they would give you a withholding tax rate, directing your customer the rate at which they should deduct the tax. And so, instead of forty dollars getting deducted on your hundred dollar payment, you maybe get like a three dollar deduction or a five dollar deduction. This is a huge uh, cash flow planning which one needs to do. Second, I think, is the expatriate uh, planning, how the expats would come, what would be the tax costs, etc. Because once you start to execute the project, you may have all the expats to come in and uh, do their job. So I think these two are the significant ones. Other than that, you know, you set up your accounting processes, your, uh, you know, whatever the school that gets set up. Okay. 
so uh, like you said uh, in this answer like uh, about the ad bank so what is ad bank and uh, how do i know like which should ad bank should i select or uh, like how can i choose an ad bank right uh, good question so ad bank is nothing but a, any bank in india which has been authorized by rbi which is our central bank to monitor the process of foreign exchange coming in going out to the bank transactions and which includes monitoring the setup of project office and uh, branch offices also so it can be any bank for example from korea shinhan bank is already there in india they have a bank license so they are also categorized as an ad bank so you can maybe start by approaching shinhan bank bank that you work with in korea and ask them to set up a project office for you uh we you can only choose one any bank or one project office so you just need to be careful if you already have an existing relationship with that bank in korea obviously that helps you but even if you don't have you can choose other banks like city bank or uh, you know hdfc in india or yes bank so any bank can do it so i think it's more determined by your relationships that you have in your existing business uh so uh, let's assume like uh, i have uh, got a project and uh, i have completed that project in a certain time and then what will happen to my office like the branch office or the so project process uh, to uh, shut down the project office you basically you have to make sure that all your taxes are paid there are no legal compliances to be done etc and then you can apply to the bank and to ministry of corporate affairs for closure of your project office Uh, and basically take all your money back to the head office. 